Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As always, it's me, Ivan, and today I'll give you my thoughts about Breitling watches based on two models that I have here in the studio the Avenger Seawolf and the Ice Blue Navitimer. A massive shout out to Joyeria Rafael Torres in Valencia, Spain, who are kind enough to let me check out their selection of Breitling, Tag Hoya, Longines, Certina and Seiko watches. Without them this video wouldn't have been possible, so definitely check them out, and if you need a new watch, DM them on Instagram or contact them via the WhatsApp number, which I've left for you in the description of this video. Breitling is one of the brands which I've been very interested in for the last couple of years and after having these two in my hand, I'm really looking forward to owning one. You know, when it comes to watches, I prefer them bigger, heavier and with a lot of wrist presence. And in my opinion, Breitling is well known for making exactly this kind of watches. Their designs are iconic, especially their divers and chronograph designs, and to illustrate that, let's have a closer look at the Seawolf Avenger first. Guys, in terms of size, this watch is absolutely mental. It's 45mm in diameter, 18.5mm thick, and it has a massive lug to lug of 55mm. The space between the lugs is 22, and pay attention, guys, on this strap, it weighs 160 grams. That's insane. But then there is the bracelet option, which increases the weight up to 249 grams. And let me tell you, when I'm financially ready to buy this watch, I'm gonna be a man and go for the bracelet. It may eventually make my left arm grow disproportionately bigger, but I'm decided to take the risk, because I'm literally blown away. I just love the way it looks with this eye-catching yellow dial on my 17cm wrist. And by the way, I can barely pull it off, so if your wrist is any smaller, I strongly recommend you try it on first. When it comes to the build quality, the Seawolf is made of 316L steel. It probably has the thickest double dome sapphire crystal I've ever seen on a watch, and it has a water resistance of 3000 meters. You wear this watch while visiting the Titanic, and rest assured, your kids will inherit a very nice souvenir. For the finishing, Breitling has gone for a brushed finish, for the most part with some polished accents on the crown and the bezel, and to me that's a very good choice. Let me also mention here that the bezel action is excellent, the 120 clicks sound sharp, they feel refined, and provide a very positive experience. Before we move on to the Navi timer, let me just say that the Seawolf houses an ETA 2824-2 chronometer grade movement, adjusted in 5 positions to ensure excellent accuracy, and while some people may not like the idea of having an ETA movement in a 4500 euro watch, I'm not against it at all, due to the fact that if something goes wrong, out of warranty, any experienced watchmaker should be able to take care of it. Plus, it's a well-proven movement with a long track record of durability and reliability. Alright, let's continue with the Navi timer now. Guys, this is a completely different watch. It's probably the most iconic Breitling design, and with these newer iterations, there is a lot to like. This isn't a small watch either, but it's way more wearable than the Seawolf. We are looking at a case diameter of 41mm, but the reason why this watch is talked about as a 43mm is the bezel, since it measures, well, 43mm. Then we've got the Luck2Luck, -luck, which is 485 and finally the thickness is 135 which is nothing for a chronograph. Here is how it looks on my wrist, it wears great, and I would say that even people with 15cm wrists might be able to wear it without a problem. In my opinion, there are three things that make this watch very special. The first one I've already mentioned a couple of times, it's the iconic design, which according to Breitling dates back to 1952. The second highlight is the gorgeous ice blue sunburst dial, which unfortunately my camera is not picking up, probably because the light I'm using is too harsh. In real life it looks more blue and much more beautiful. I would say that this one and the pistachio model are the two Navi timer dials I like the most. Last but not least, the BO1 in-house movement is quite impressive, 
It is COSC certified and it features a column wheel as well as a vertical clutch and a 70 hours of power reserve. Thanks to the column wheel, the feedback you get from the pushers is very positive. It feels very crisp and there is a good amount of resistance to avoid accidental presses. It's also important to mention here guys that since this caliber has a vertical clutch, you can leave the chronograph running all the time and it will not cause any additional wear and tear. Which as you know is not the case with the Vagio 7750 based calibers. It's very obvious that I'm impressed by both watches and this pretty much answers the question in the title of this video. Are Breitling watches worth buying? Well, in my opinion they absolutely are and here is why. Breitling is one of the older watch brands. It has the heritage and it delivers when it comes to design, build quality and finishing. In addition, their pricing seems fair to me. Yes, they've increased their prices just like everyone else, but not as aggressively as Omega for example. The MSRP of the Seawolf is 4500 euro. The Navitima is 8800. And while that's not cheap by any means, I don't think it's crazy expensive. On top of that, you'll probably be able to get some discount. And I'm telling you, the Seawolf is most likely going to be my next big purchase and I'm really looking forward to it. Now it's your turn guys, let me know in the comments below what you think about Breitling watches and if you've had any experience with the brand, please share it with the rest of us. Thank you very much for watching, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing if you're new. Take care, I'll see you in the next one.